In this video, we're gonna go over every single tool in Descript's timeline and how you can use it to edit faster. Let's get into it. All right, so we've done a bunch of videos on Descript, super powerful video editor, podcasting, YouTube videos, TikTok reels, all sorts of stuff. We have a whole 15 minute overview video if you don't know anything about Descript, so go check that out. This video, I'm gonna go into more detail about what all the tools do in the timeline area. If you wanna get a little bit more advanced of how to use the timeline, and if you have a background in video editing and are familiar with the timeline, uh, this is gonna be super useful of how to get up to speed and work in the timeline, which can greatly speed things up uh, depending on how complicated you wanna get with your video. So I'm in an older project that we've done before. This is our how to edit a podcast in Descript in 15 minutes. And so you can kind of see how we put it all together. We have got our main composition, our script, and stuff we didn't want. We tend to just ignore it and versus deleting it. So if we need to come back, we could see what was skipped and we could restore it if we need to. But deleting and ignoring do the same exact thing. As far as the script is concerned in playback, it just skips it. So we've got a bunch of scenes. We've got our thing edited. If we jump down here on the very bottom, we've got our show timeline button. And usually yours will probably show up a little bit smaller like this. But because we have a lot of layers going on, I'm going to make it bigger. And let's jump into what all of the features do. So first up over here on the far right, it has layer size, we have default, or we have large. So if you want everything to be super big and you have a big screen, you can hit large. If not, you can hit default. And I believe it'll pretty much, based on the max number of rows you have, it'll kind of fill up the space depending on your screen size. So if you have a bigger screen, it'll make the uh, each layer bigger. I'm gonna turn off the side here on projects just so we get a little bit more space. And so you can see we've got a whole structure of our audio, our script, whatever is our sort of source material, the script, the stuff we see here in the text. This is represented on the bottom row of the timeline. And then all of our other visuals are represented as layers above our script. And this is regardless if it is audio, so we got our intro music here, it's noted as green or visuals. And the way you look at the timeline, or if you wanna think about layers, like if you're wondering why is something not showing up, think of it, we're looking top down. So we're looking, whatever is up here towards the top is what we're gonna see first here. So our frame is up top, that's our first layer. And then that is masking out whatever our video layers are underneath. So we're looking down. So if we had our videos on top and we could just click on the video, go to layer order and say, bring to front, we can see it jumps up. It is now on top of our background layer and over here in our video, it looks weird because it is now on top of our frame and it doesn't look very good. So I'm just gonna undo that. But that's just a thing to keep in mind and how you can manipulate layers. If you're trying to stack things like text elements is a common one if you add text and you're like, why am I not seeing the text? Usually it's because it is on a layer beneath a video layer or something else that is blocking it. And so you'd wanna say with your text, bring to front or send to back for your background layers. So one thing to keep in mind there, we can also see our visual representations of our scenes, all of our forward slashes. So we ex explain scenes in other videos, but basically kind of easy way to mark off where you want something new visually to happen. So if once you start adding media, wherever you have the next scene, it'll add the media and kind of fill it out as long as there's enough time in the media, it'll fill out whatever space it has in the scene. So it just makes editing a bit faster and easier. So you don't have to come in and click and drag and trim your ends, which you can do here, but it just saves time in the beginning. And also if you're not using the timeline at all, using scenes is kind of the only way you have to mark in and out points of where you want to add media to, um, to fill out the space. Okay. So tool wise, let me go to tools because it's probably why you're here. Uh, and then I'll jump into some more details of working in the timeline left to right. Hide timeline, that was what we clicked to show and hide our timeline. We've got our clock. So first one is at what point is our indicator at time-wise in the video? And then the other one is the working duration of the video. So we're at the 14 second mark in our timeline. Our video currently is 17 and a half minutes uh, with this duration. With these buttons, this is just go forward and back in scenes. This is also handy when you're in the, just the script to navigate between scenes. And if you hover over any tool, there's usually it'll pop up if there's an available keyboard shortcut. So it's good to keep in mind in the future because keyboard shortcuts are usually always way faster. And if you're just like, how do I do this? But keyboard shortcut, if you just hover, it'll usually show you the keyboard shortcut. So it's just an easier way to, to find out in the future how to use it. And also just these tools are available on the bottom, whether we have the timeline open or not. It's the ones on the far right that are not available unless you're in the timeline. Play, stop, pretty self-explanatory. Playback speed, if you want to adjust the speed 
of the playback. You can come here, pick some presets, or again, keyboard shortcuts. And then if you had markers, which are just kind of easy way to add text notes or indicators of different sections of your script, useful if you're working on a larger project, this would have a drop down of your different markers so you could quickly jump to it. So this is navigational stuff. Over here on the right are the tools. These tools only apply if you're in the timeline. So by default, the select tool is going to be selected when you open the timeline. And this is a mouse. You click, you point on things, you can manipulate stuff. This is probably the tool that I'm using 90% of the time if I'm in the timeline. Uh, if you can select, you can click. If you click and hold and drag, you can move things around. You notice it had the pop-up if I went to attach to a scene. So if I click and drag, well, I got to click and drag first. Sometimes the timeline's a little finicky. Click, drag, hold the shift it attaches it to a scene. And that red line is what scene it will start at. I'm holding the shift button right now. And so you can see the red line pops to, snaps to the scene. So if I release, it's gonna snap to that scene. And then you can come and trim the ends and it'll snap to whatever scene, but you obviously don't have to adhere to a scene if you don't want to, you can have these clips start and stop at any point. Images, they're images, so you can have them start run forever. If you have an actual video clip, you're gonna be limited to whatever start and stop points are in the source video clip. So if you're at the very end of the clip and you drag it out and it stops, it's because there's no more video. I'm gonna try to undo what I did, but it doesn't really matter. This is a dummy project that I can mess up with so you can see how it works. Uh, same thing with select, you can trim your ends here. This is also useful because if you're just working in the script, it is transcribing the script, but sometimes the transcript when you're working with the text doesn't perfectly match up with the actual waveforms or how it was pronounced. So sometimes you might get some hard cuts or clips on the uh, clip if you're just editing in the script. So coming into the timeline and let me zoom in, I'm going to hit command and plus or control plus if you're on a PC, uh, you could also hover down here, there's this bottom scroll bar with these little handles. So if you drag the handles away, we zoom out. And if I drag the handles towards each other, we can zoom in. So another, a few options you have to zoom in and out. And so when you're editing, sometimes like, let's say I deleted on it, or I had in the script cut on interviews, but sometimes it makes a hard cut for whatever reason, you would come into the timeline hover over the end of the clip and you can drag out manually and look at the waveform visually to make sure that the full word is pronounced. And so you have a lot more fine tuned control over where the script is cutting, which you don't get if you're just working in the script. One other thing with select tool, if you come on a clip and you hover over the end here, we have these little dots. And so this is a way you can add a fade. If you're on a, a visual element, it would be a fade to black or fade out. Um, if we're on audio, it would be fading the audio out, but you can either add the duration here and specify what kind of visual element it is. Or if we just hover over here and drag this over, we add a nice little handle that fades out. It doesn't make sense in this clip, but it's just cool to know and just adds a little bit more control, a little bit more polish. Okay, so moving along, so that's the select tool. That's probably a tool you'll mostly be using here to click and drag and move everything around, either moving the clip around or moving the start and stop points of clips. Next tool is the blade tool. And as you might've guessed, we can blade things, also called cutting things. And it has a nice little hover indicator. So you can see this little red markers where I'm hovering if I click, that is where it's going to make the cut. So this is just really good for trimming things. You need to make a cut. You need to make an edit to delete stuff or to split up audio. This is the tool you want to use. And so I just hit the A key to go back to select because um, once you blade something, you're probably going to want to do something with the things you split. And so then you would select a clip. And if you hit delete, that deletes whatever clip you just made, what new selection you just made. So blade tool, usually if you're working the timeline and you need to split things, and a quicker alternative, instead of clicking the blade tool, clicking where you want to cut, and then going back, if you put the playhead, the line where you want to cut, and you hit S for split, you can, it'll, you can see I just made the cut right here. It works wherever you are selected. So if I'm selecting this clip, I have the line here, it split the clip. So if the clip is selected wherever, and you hit S, it'll cut where the uh, time indicator is. If you don't have anything selected, 
it will split the script. So just a quicker shortcut tool on if you need to cut something quickly and you don't want to switch to the blade tool every single time. Okay, next tool is range tool. So this is if you want to select a specific part of a clip. I use this a lot if I'm using like Final Cut or Resolve. I don't think I've really used it much here. So I selected this middle part of this clip and I dragged it out, but as you can see, it kind of like duplicated a section of the clip instead of taking, extracting the section out. So it's a bit weird. It's useful if you like wanted to select, let's say I know this whole range here and I want to have this precise selection where I can see the waveforms uh, and I want to delete that. It's good for stuff like that, where if you want to mark a specific range or an area of a clip and you want to delete it, it's good for that. It's good if you want to select an area, like more than one clip, good for selecting portions inside a clip. But as we just saw, we can't select multiple clips. So range tool, that's what it does. Use it as you see fit. The slip tool is cool. So let's say we've got our B-roll stuff here. So we've got these other little video clips in our intro. So let's say I like the timing of these. I like this cut, 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 but I need to nudge it, you know, maybe like the clip ends a few frames too soon than I want. So if I come with a slip tool selected and I come over to this B-roll clip and I hover and I click and I start dragging, if I had the select tool selected and I clicked and dragged, it would move the whole clip over and like overwrite other clips or just kind of mess up my editing. With the slip tool, I like the cut moments, but I'm just shifting the specific time that I'm using in that clip. So you can see the, the uh, waveforms move and you can see the visual clip move. So I'm keeping all my edits the same. I'm just tweaking the actual moment of the clip that's used. This is similar to uh, if you come over to the layer area and it has this start at section and it has this little indicator of what section of the clip is used. And if you click here and drag, it's basically doing the exact same thing. So this is a way you can do this. If you're not in the timeline, you can still slip clips. It slip is the technical term that it's called. Or if you are in the timeline and you have the slip tool selected, you're doing the same exact thing. And you can see over in the uh, start at the same data is updating of what specific moment I'm using. This is also in the layer panel. If you have a really long clip, like this was like a 30 minute screen recording and I'm trying to drag this little sliver, it's really hard to get fine tuned control of like, I'm trying to nudge it a few frames here in the timeline very easier to get much more fine-tuned control. So that's the slip tool. And then the last one is the hand tool. And it's basically like the, you can't do anything. So if you just want to click around and drag and, oh, I take that back. You can do stuff. Yeah, I didn't think the hand tool would work in the bottom. It shouldn't. So the top part, if you want to just click and drag around, I can't click any clips. I can't do anything. I'm just clicking and dragging and navigating, but Apparently, okay, I can hover and I can click and drag these clips, but if I still go to an end, you can trim. So keep that in mind. If you're using the hand tool, you can still trim parts of your script, but for the most part, you can't click anything. You're just clicking around and dragging. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much all of the tools we got in the timeline. Uh, the other thing that you can check out is uh, if you uh, hover in your scenes, and you right click, you have some more options here. If you want to add another scene before, if you want to merge it with the scene before or after. And then if you're doing anything with layouts, which is sort of Descript's template version, we cover a lot of that in our podcast episodes. A common use case would be you have, you know, your podcast with like two speakers. And so you would use different custom layouts per scene where like one layout would be, we want to have both speakers at the same time. Another layout would be one speaker. And so if you have a layout that you like, or you want to reuse, you can copy the layout and then you go to another scene and then you paste the layout. And then also you could set your project thumbnail, which ties into if you publish directly to YouTube or some other platforms uh, from Descript directly, it would use that as the thumbnail. Another thing you can keep in mind. That is pretty much the timeline in a nutshell. Overall, just it gives you much more fine tune control if you're trying to get really specific uh, with the polish of your edit. Script's a really good way to get like kind of a block hammer chisel edit and the timeline's a good way to get that final polish smooth edit for 
giving marble carving analogies, knowing very little about marble carving. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, this came from a couple of requests in our comments. If you got other more requests, questions about Descript, check out our whole playlist of Descript tutorials, but also leave notes in the comments if I don't cover anything. And we'll try to hit up and make new tutorials about that as well. Thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next episode.